Hey everybody, welcome back. Mike from Spectre Comics here. I should also say welcome to the new year. This is my first video of 2021. I'm a little disappointed in myself that it took me three weeks to post my first video, but what happened was after the holiday break, I had a nice week off between Christmas and New Year's. I uh, went back to work and it's been just crazy long hours. I've been working weekends and I've just not had the time and I've been exhausted to create some content, post a video, but I'm still on a little bit of a, of a Star Wars kick from the season two finale of The Mandalorian and the great season of The Mandalorian. And uh, so today we're going to do a R2-D2 speed draw. I'm going to talk a little bit about how to draw them and some of the complications and how hard it is to draw this character. I was actually a little surprised at how difficult it was to draw this character. So before we get into that, I want to say I'm drawing on a Wacom Cintiq 13 HD drawing tablet. I'm using Photoshop Elements 2019 as my drawing software. And I actually probably should upgrade that now. I usually like to upgrade my software every couple of years. We're in a new decade now, so I should probably get the most recent version of the software. So probably be doing that soon. That's not the point. We're going to talk about drawing R2-D2. Um, I was a little surprised at how difficult it is to draw R2. He seems simple. He's basically a cylinder with a dome head and a couple of uh, legs, but uh, He's got a lot of detail in him, so it's hard to get him right and to get the proportions right and how uh, thick the legs are compared to the body. So there's a lot of different nuances to drawing this to make it look right. Yeah, you can draw. It's actually easier to draw him from um, a straight on view, but when you take him at any angle, getting the legs proportioned right, the legs positioned right, the way they attach to the, uh, to the body and then uh, angle down, and then obviously he's got those big, uh, I'll call them feet at the bottom of, of the legs. Uh, with the rollers on him and then he's obviously got you know he could be standing in a upright position with the two legs or extend the third leg down so um, it was challenging to draw this character and I actually drew him a few times because I wasn't getting it right I, I drew him a few times and uh, what I settled on with this video is what you're seeing here um, and I'm still actually not 100% happy with the result it looks okay um, I'm, I'm, you know it's good drawing but uh, there are little there's some problems and I'll point those out <laughs> as I go and the problems stem from the difficulty in drawing them and specifically uh, one of the things that I find challenging is getting all the detail into even on just on the body and there's actually a lot of detail in the legs as well so uh, what I did was uh, after trying several times to draw the characters you know I tried just straight up drawing them from you know looking at an image um, what I found was that I kept getting the legs angled wrong. So what I did was um, I created a rectangular cube to kind of set the legs on the ground. The legs basically with the third leg extended, the legs create kind of a triangle on the ground. And I used the cube to kind of line up the legs so that they're in the same plane in perspective. And that's how I kind of started the body. And then once I drew the third leg at the top of the, I'll call it the top of the pyramid that's drawn on the ground, the top of the triangle, um, I was able to take a line up at an angle and that is the angle that the cylinder basically the center of the cylinder and then you can create the body from that so that's kind of how i started and then it's easy to just create a sphere and create the dome head and kind of raise it a little bit it's not a straight up sphere uh, you know dome it's it's actually extended up a little bit um on a drum so uh, just a, you know a couple of inches or an inch or two um and then the dome sits on that and that's what connects to the body and that's what makes the transition from the cylinder of the body to the dome of the head so after you get you know the legs the feet kind of set in the perspective you want you get the cylinder drawn for the body you get the dome for the head on there here's the hard part is connecting the feet to the legs which connect to the body and getting them drawn right and that's one of the actual that's one of the things that i'm not excited about with the final result of this drawing is that the arms kind of look like they connect to the body in a weird way and they don't actually look like you know technically if you drew a straight view of r2 you would see the legs basically connect through the body if, you know imagine if you drew a rod through the center of the top of the arm where it connects to the body uh, they should line up in whatever perspective uh, you're drawing um, the way I drew these, they don't, number one, don't look like they line up. And number two, they look like they're connected to the body at a weird angle. Um, so that's kind of hard to get that perspective just right. Uh, I drew this body at a weird, I drew the body at a weird angle. Um, also at the bottom of the cylinder is uh, a little extension 
kind of like a, a, a round trapezoid type shape. And that's where the third leg extends from into that piece. So, you know, you have to draw that piece to extend down and then that connects to the third extended leg. Um, I was, I actually didn't realize until I started drawing this how difficult it was to draw the, the, the legs. Um, there's a lot of detail in there. I drew it several times trying to get the detail in there. Um, just following, again, I was using a reference image to kind of just get the pieces in there. And the funny thing was is I, I, I don't think I've ever drawn a good drawing of R2-D2. Um, when I was a kid, I think I tried, realized it was too hard, and I just gave up. So uh, for this video, I was committed to getting the drawing done no matter how good or bad it looked. Um, so, you know, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel uh, to support me being committed to finishing this drawing, which I did. And again, the drawing's not that bad, but there are some things about it that I don't like. And, uh, uh, you know, as I'm kind of going through the method of drawing them that I did, I also started, you know, like I normally do, as we've done in any other drawings that I've done that if you've watched my other videos, where, you know, I start with a really sketchy image as an underlay, uh, and then I draw the hard lines on the top. And you usually, you know, I... I take advantage of the tools Photoshop gives us, you know, being able to draw ellipses and, and circles and, uh, you know, straight lines with ease because of the, the program and what it allows you to do. So um, I did the same method here uh, using the uh, underlay as a guide to try to get all the pieces in and allow, allow me to move stuff around and shift things around to get it in the right spot. You know, um, following the little patterns uh, of the little detail that's on his body. You know, the little extender arms, the, the grills, uh, all the little compartments that house little uh, rods and equipment and tools that come out of R2. Um, that actually is a part of the drawing where maybe drawing on paper would be a little easier because you can use a straight edge. I've never actually taken a straight edge to my tablet to try to draw a straight line. But, um, you know, if I was on a piece of, if it was on a pad of paper and drawing there, I would use straight edges and uh round you know circles and circle templates to get the pieces and shapes where they needed to be to be correct so uh, i don't think there's any shame in using a straight edge or uh, an, a template an ellipse template or a circle template to get things drawn as precisely as possible i really like drawing as precise as possible uh, probably my nature of being an architect is the reason that that's the case but um, that's just how i draw so going with that same theme i think Similarly, I've had struggled drawing a C-3PO. So I don't think I've ever completed a good drawing of C-3PO. Never could get them to look right. However, I do commit myself now that I will do a new video uh, in the near future where I draw C-3PO and do the process and maybe try to break it down like I did R2 here um, to try to get a good drawing out of that and make it look better. You know, I think I'm going to do a video on C-3PO soon um, and we'll see how that that one turns out too so actually speaking of r2d2 and c3po these are two of the most iconic characters robots in movie history they've been in a ton of shows a ton of movies um, and i think actually in the mid 80s they had their own cartoon called uh, droids which was on saturday mornings um, it had a really terrible theme song i've actually recently seen it on YouTube. You can go check it out if you've never seen the show. Uh, it is really bad, but it's kind of how cartoons were back when I was a kid in the 80s. Just speaking of the movies, the sequel trilogy underutilized R2, R2 and 3PO. Like they were just relegated to side characters, you know, whereas they've just been prominent through the whole series, the, the prequel trilogy, the original series. Um, and it's just very disappointing what J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson did to these characters. I mean, R2 and The Force Awakens was just sitting in the corner and not even turned on. I mean, how pathetic is that? Um, I'm hoping from the rumors I'm hearing that they're actually going to retcon the sequel trilogy and kind of just wipe it out of existence. I've already said in many videos that I've basically written those off. I do not consider them canon, and I don't even acknowledge their existence. Starting with The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker, two movies that I will never own and never watch again. Just horrible, horrible movies. Thought we were starting off on the right foot with The Force Awakens, but when you look back on it and you look at what the whole sequel trilogy did, pretty horrible, and I just dismiss it outright. But always been a fan of R2. I actually have 
a lot of uh, figures here for some reason. I have got my original R2 figure from the original collection. I probably had got this in the 70s. Um, the sticker is yellowed a little bit, but still in good shape. This R2, I think I bought during the prequel trilogy. A um, little more detailed. Uh, pretty cool. Um, this was a not necessarily an action figure. This was actually a little, little remote control um, R2 that I sent for. It came with a stand and uh, a little lightsaber that act as a remote control. And it just had a function. It would move forward or turn back on this. The, there's a little wheel that turns when it turns back. Um, this was pretty cool. But unfortunately, it only lasted about a month before it stopped working. So that was a little bit of a waste. A little disappointed at that, but it's still a good looking action figure. Um, I've got this R2-D2 um, from the Clone Wars animated series, so it's still in package. And actually, this is not an R2, but this is R2-Boo. Uh, this is an action figure that I got in Disneyland. Um, I think you can only buy this in Disneyland, and it's only an available. It was available for a limited time, so I don't even know if you can still get this. So this was uh, available during the Halloween season. It's kind of got orange and green and Halloween colors. And then I've got the big boy here. This is my uh, voice activated R2. Hey R2, light beam. See, I got that from my wife uh, about 10 years ago. Uh, it was one of the best birthday gifts I've ever gotten. So uh, that's really cool. He'll kind of wander around the room and explore and talk to you, you know, chirping and stuff. So, um, but anyway, this is my final drawing. Put a little uh, Rebel logo in the background just to give him a little backdrop. Did a little, little bit of color. So that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed following along and talking Star Wars and R2-D2 with me. Go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section. Let me know who your favorite droid is. I've done a couple other speed draws that are Star Wars related. I've done uh, Grogu recently uh, from The Mandalorian. I've done Mandalorian. Uh, and I've done a K2SO speed draw, so go check those videos out. They'll be linked in the description box below. Let me know in the comment section who your favorite droid is, and if you want me to draw a specific droid or any Star Wars character, uh, put that in the comment section below. I'll try to get that done for you. Um, and then definitely subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Uh, the final drawing here will be posted on my Instagram account, at Space Misadventures. So go ahead and not only follow me there, but check that out if you want to study the drawing a little closer and see all the mistakes that I've pointed out in this video that I did. Um, that's it. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and have a great day.